Madam, may I? There is far more to this subject than what the dictionary says. The fields that this subject encompasses are not just astronomy and archaeology, but anthropology, mythology, philosophy, folklore, biology, art, and many other kinds of cultural studies. It is a big topic. Glad stuff is young. Oops. Did not know we had guests. We would like to introduce you to the people who got this started. Will you start, Merlin? I would like you to meet John Aubrey. Antiquarian and writer. An antiquarian is a person who studies antiquities. He was the first to discover the megaliths of Avery, writing a great many detailed descriptions about this complex. He also wrote about Stonehenge and was the first to comment on the slight depressions inside the enclosure. Stukely, who we will discuss in a minute, ignored these depressions. In the 1920s they were rediscovered. They are now known as the Aubrey Holes. Aubrey believed these megaliths to be ancient temples. Was he right? Let us meet our next history maker. This is Reverend William Stukely, antiquarian, scholar of sacred history and Catholic science. Cable is a medieval study of Jewish mysticism through cipher methods of interpretation of the scriptures. He is credited with the most complete archaeological fieldwork done at Avery and Stonehenge. Even if he did miss the holes. He left descriptions, observations, drawings, and sketches. Some of the things he documented were later destroyed by Christians fearing they were works of the devil. Stukely was the first to put forth the idea that these places were built by the Druids. Was he right? On to our next and last person for now. Woo! Surprised! I thought you would be. J. Norman Lockyer started out as an amateur astronomer and civil servant. Later he became a well-known solar physicist, becoming a fellow of the Royal Society, also becoming director of the Solar Physics Observatory in South Kensington. In the 1890s he became interested in the possibility that ancient Greek and Egyptian temples and monuments could have astronomical alignments. Astronomical alignments for most monuments occur during midwinter, midsummer, and during stop points in the moon cycle. Karnak in Egypt was one such place he studied. Later he moved on to Stonehenge. He identified a number of astronomical alignments. He thought he might be able to figure the monument's age by figuring the exact astronomical alignments at the time of construction. Using precession of the Earth's orbital axis and the alignment of the sun during midwinter, he hoped this would give him the age of the monument, but he missed it by that much. Precession is described as the slow duration of the rotation axis of the Earth. It swallows as it moves on its axis. He is credited with being the founder of the field of archaeoastronomy, and the controversy began. Let's see. Hmm. Just how far fetched was some of those thoughts from our guests? With research we have discovered that they have been places of worship, places of burial, and that they provided astronomical alignments. So maybe they were not just dreaming. I will take it now, Merlin. <laughs> research has shown that they were not built by the Druids or Merlin. Sorry, Merlin, wherever you are. With the advances in science and new discoveries, this field is coming up with many surprising conclusions. On to some interesting people. Lockyer tried to use one method of proving a megalith's age. This method did not seem to work back then. These men support controversial ideas. Who are they? Men like these form the non-traditional group of people who study the ancients. 
from geology and news reporting, many people come up with new and unexpected theories. Let us take a look at the world. These are some of the many places where astronomical alignments are found. Most associated with some kind of megaliths, monuments and temples. From Americas to Europe, Russia to China, Philippines to New Zealand. We will now cover some of these remarkable and some still controversial places. Conquering is so fun. Sorry, I mean traveling. Older than Stonehenge, this complex is located approximately 100 kilometers west of Abu Simbel. This site contains a number of standing stones and topple megaliths. The complex was first discovered by a group of scientists including Fred Lindor from Southern Methodist University in Texas. Professor of Anthropology, his team, uncovered the site in 1974. Later Jane Kim Melville from the University of Colorado at Boulder, astronomy professor, has worked out the alignments. He has confirmed an east-west alignment and a north-south alignment. The east-west is in the form of a gate, believed to have been set to the sun's alignment for both rising and setting on the summer solstice 6,500 years ago. Its site consists of a 12-foot circle, four pairs of large upright slabs, and five lines of standing and topple stones. This is truly an incredible sight. But let me show you something really interesting. The temple is now known as the Temple of Dendera in Jenna. The North Pole constellations is represented by the hippo. This view of the zodiac constellations was created around 200 BC. It has been said to pattern the sky in the year 90,000 BC. According to one translation, the sky model represents the passing of three and a half great years. Each great year is approximately 25,800 years. Now you see what I mean when I say controversial. This item raises many questions about how long man has watched the stars. Did you know that the Arabs had launched a huge amount of the night sky? They are responsible for the names of many stars. We know this corner of the world observed much about the sky. But other buildings have stars connected to them as well. Some speculate that the sacred temple complex of Luxor and Karnak are laid out in the shape of the constellation Aries. We know for sure that the summer solstice sunrise cuts through Temple of Amun. The winter solstice sunrise also traverses the temple at Karnak. We have heard that the pyramids are laid out in size and shape to the constellation Orion. Orion is identified with the goddess Eris. The Great Pyramid also has a perfect north-south and east-west alignment. And it is said that the shafts exiting the king's chamber point to the position that Polaris, the North Star, was at 5,000 years ago. Many other monuments including the Temple of Reherak, sometimes called the Sun Temple of Ramesses. Here the sun during the minor solstices bathes the entrance and the statues inside in light. We have more to see. In the area of France, called Brittany, we find this wondrous megalith. The rock with fairies. La roche Catches the rising sun on the day of the winter solstice. The monument comprises 33 red stones and 8 stones of cover. The heaviest stone weighs around 45 tons. Certain stones would have been transferred up to 4 kilometers. Legends tell that it was the work of the fairies. It could have been a refuge for dragons, or possibly the tomb of a Roman general. Later it was thought to be a temple for priest or site of human sacrifices. Oh Merlin, it's your turn. On to Britain. This map shows locations of prehistoric stone circles and stone rows. They are indicated by the red dots. It covers Britain, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. There are so many we could never talk about them all in one evening. I would like to show you a few. Here we go. Hey, the place I built. Just kidding. Stonehenge's earliest construction dates from the Mesolithic at 8500 BC. The outer ditch and the Aubrey holes were constructed between 3020 BC to 1520 BC. All other phases of construction were done between 2440 BC and 1520 BC. 
This site is best known for the sunrise on the summer solstice. The entrance was also reoriented slightly during the lifetime of Stonehenge to compensate for the astronomical variation in the midsummer sunrise over many centuries. It is thought that the four station stones could mark the most northerly and southerly positions of the sun and the moon. A new study has suggested that Stonehenge has been reassembled many times. On to our next site. This site in Wessex has at its heart an enormous earthenwork circle some 400 meters wide. The external ditch circumference is over 1200 meters. Inside is a 400 meter circle of large standing stones and inside that are two more stone circles each 100 meters in diameter. The complex also consists two stone avenues and a sanctuary. There are over 600 megaliths in this monument. The most famous alignment here is Midsummer, which centers from Circle D. From here we will move on to Scotland. The site consists of a line of mica schist stones. The line of stones is oriented northeast to southwest. This site was for both Midsummer setting sun and the midwinter setting sun. It also referenced the island of Carr and the mountains of importance on the island of Jura. There are many in Scotland, but I will only show you one more here. This site is a recumbent stone circle at which all the stones of the circle have been removed, and only the large recumbent and its two substantial flanking stones remain in position. Someday they may figure out the measurements of the circle and where all other key points may have been. The recumbent stone covers azimuths in the range 207.8 to 224.8 and horizon values of 3.5 to 1.3. The result in declination values of minus 25.4 to minus 21.7 which are covered by the width of the recumbent thus cover the setting position of the sun on midwinter's day. Scotland has many arrows, cairns, circles and other megaliths. These two are but a sample. From here we move on to Ireland. Ireland too has many sites, this one being the most interesting. The New Grunge tomb is located in County Meath, Ireland. Built around 3200 BC by the Neolithic people who lived in Ireland at the time. The tomb was discovered in 1699 and it was excavated and restored a lot between 1962 and 1975. An entrance on the southeastern side opens to a 62 foot long passageway leading to a central chamber 20 feet high and three side chambers. For about two weeks, on either side of the winter solstice, light streams through a roof box located above the entrance passage. This allows light to shine through the length of the passageway, illuminating the entire central chamber which must have been where people were buried. Now an overview of some other places and events. More modern astronomical devices include meridiana lines like the one in St. Maria de Glangeli Church in Roma. Between 1650 and 1750 it became very popular for Catholic churches to have a noon line or great meridian to keep celestial time. Going counterclockwise we see the many solstice events and old world holidays. Angkor Wat in Cambodia if looked at from above is laid out in the shape of the constellation Draco. On Easter Island its seven statues look towards the point where the sun sets during the equinox, as in the case of many religious structures it has been situated with astronomical precision. And Russia contains many megaliths with astronomical ties. So man has stared at the stars, sun and moon for a long time and gave those objects important places in their culture. So where next? Now I will pass it along to James. Thank you, Merlin. <coughs> Let's start in the south. Tayuanako near the shores of Lake Titicaca, Bolivia has an unusual monument said to have been built before the Incan had arrived. As the sun rises each day it moves along the horizon and it rises in a different spot. To measure this movement they built the temple itself as a giant clock to tell them how the progression of the sun was proceeding. This site still provokes further study as does the Nazca lines in Peru. Recently they have noted that some of the lines point toward the sun's starting point in the sky during the rainy season. Another lines point to water sources available during this time of the year. On to Central America. North of Emrita is located Zidilchotan and the Temple of the Seven Dolls. It was built around 280 and was inhabited until the time of the Spanish conquest. 
The city was discovered around 1540 but the only excavated structure was the Temple of the Seven Dolls. This temple is notable because it is the only Mayan temple with windows and a tower instead of a roof comb. Equinox sunrise here is where every year the 21st of March and September in the Equinox an overwhelming effect is created. Both the Aztecs and Mayans paid great attention to the hymns. Not only the stars, sun and moon but also Venus and other celestial bodies. From here we go to Terrical Tower. Terrical Tower, located at Chichen Itza, was a celestial observatory to the stars that was aligned along the line of the summer and winter solstice. The dome has many windows peppered throughout. Stars can be seen through different windows on specific dates. This structure is one of the pinnacles of Mayan architecture. Creating a stone dome is hard work, but creating it with windows at precise points takes an enormous amount of time and skill. It was built sometime around 800 AD. The observatory has the same basic shape as a modern-day observatory. The central dome has slots for observing the stars, although the exact method of observation remains a mystery. There is no evidence that the Maya developed telescopes, yet they were able to chart stars they could not have been able to see with a naked eye. Now we travel to Tenochtitlan. Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan, eastern Mexico, has many festivals associated with the equinoxes. It is said that the Spanish did not know they were building on top of an ancient temple. To them it was the tallest hill in the area. Teotihuacan also has many structures. All of the buildings are aligned with the stars and the solar system from precise survey points in the nearby mountain range using an advanced understanding of mathematics, geometry and astronomy. Amazing what they could do without computers. On to North America. The Tequesta, Miami Circle. In August 1998, excavations exposed an archaeological treasure consisting of a circle of holes chiseled into the limestone bedrock. This circle of mystery is 38 feet in diameter which lies on a 2.2 acre site. The circle is depicted by at least 20 regular cut basins which vary in size from 1 to 3 feet. Peculiar to the circle are numerous post holes and a carving in the rock similar to an eye that appear on the circle's cast west axis suggesting an alignment to the equinox. Any astronomical alignments remain to be fully documented. Also particular to the site are several offerings, including two basaltic stone axes not manufactured in Florida and a five-foot chart deliberately buried in the circle. The overall site is approximately 2,000 years old. The age of the circle is not known. I wonder who built it. Our next place is just as mysterious. About 40 miles north of the city of Boston and about 25 miles inland from the Atlantic Ocean is what appears to be the greatest and perhaps oldest megalithic enigma of North America. Mystery Hill, also known as America Stonehenge, is a site that has puzzled archaeologists for almost a century. Running across the 30 acres of hillside are a series of low walls, cave-like primitive buildings and tunnels. It has been found to have astronomical alignments including summer solstice. One of the main features of the site is an enormous flat stone, like a great table, resting above the ground on four legs. Around the edge of the table runs a groove that leads to a spout, called the sacrificial stone. Underneath the sacrificial stone is a shaft eight feet long, leading to an underground chamber. It seems reasonable that this allowed a priest concealed in the chamber to speak as the voice of an oracle. To a crowd gathered around the altar the sound would appear to float up from the sacrificial stone like the voice of some disembodied spirit. How old is the site? Charcoal from one fire pit measured by Rudy Carvin dating was found to be 4,000 years old. Who built it? They have found Phoenician writing an item at the site, but this just adds to the mystery. During the 1600s the people from the old world plundered the site for stone. We may never figure out all the secrets behind this place. Now for a site still under investigation also. Cahokia Mounds in southern Illinois near East St. Louis has a circle of post holes interpreted in 1970 as an astronomical indicator of summer solstice sunrise and winter solstice sunrise. The most spectacular sunrise occurs at the equinoxes when the sun rises due east. 
The post marking these sunrises aligns with a front of Monk's Mound where the leader resided, and it looks as though Monk's Mound gives birth the sun. A possible furtery pit near the winter solstice post suggests a fire was burned to warm the sun and encourage it to return northward for another annual cycle and rebirth of the Earth. This probably marked the start of the new year. Serpent Mound, Ohio Features of Serpent Mound are aligned with both the summer solstice sunset and, less clearly, the winter solstice sunrise. A pile of burned stones once located inside the oval head area was several feet northwest of its center, possibly to make a more precise alignment with a point of V, V in the serpent's neck and the summer solstice sunset. New review carbon dates suggest that Serpent Mound, a one-quarter mile long earthen effigy of a snake, was built as many as 2,000 years later than previously thought. Next on our way through the Americas. Poverty Point Plantation, Northeastern Louisiana. Roughly 3,000 years old, the ridges are intersected by avenues that seem to align with summer and winter solstice points as well as some more obscure astronomical azimuths. These alignments represent remarkable astronomical sophistication for the New World in 1000 BC. Westward, oh! Pajada Butte in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico boasts a chamber in which a spiral petroglyph may be found. The glyph is surrounded by stone slabs, allowing only scant light to penetrate into the darkness, and as the sun makes its appearance, a slit of light climbs the wall arriving at the center of the petroglyph at noon at the time of equinox. At noon on the summer solstice, a dagger of sun penetrates the center of the spiral. On the autumnal equinox, a sun dagger passes through the center of a small spiral on the left, and another passes on the edge of a large spiral. At the winter solstice, a big sun dagger passes on either side of a large spiral. Also marks a 19-year lunar cycle. The spiral has 19 rings. We also see here the 1054 supernova of Halley's Comet below. The star six times brighter than Venus appeared in the sky. It was visible on Earth at high noon and stayed visible for 23 days. Do you believe they recorded this event also seen by the Chinese? What about Halley's Comet? This set of petroglyphs may keep us wondering for a long time. Our last sight for this evening. The Bighorn Medicine Wheel in the Bighorn Mountains near Sheridan, Wyoming was interpreted in 1974 as an indicator of summer solstice sunrise and sunset, with other alignments for the rising of certain stars such as Aldebaran, Riddle, and Sirius. Built about 1050 AD, has 28 spokes and is about 90 feet in diameter. About 50 similar circles exist. The oldest is in Canada, built about 2500 BC, the age of the Egyptian pyramids, for comparison. The alignments presented by these stone circles are controversial. The Lakota are providing more answers to the mountain questions. Next, we would like to thank you. We hope we have entertained. As well as informed. If you have any questions, the presenter will answer them now. There are also information sheets available. Thank you.